Did you know you can now coat your swords, maces and axes with poisons again? And fists? Oh yeah, combat I mean outlaw rogue is getting some of his old shit back. Shiv, kidney shot are just a few and hey, if you hate outlaw I mean combat rogues roll of the bones mechanic, well fear not because in Shadowlands it's not going away, but it will be better, trust me. And if you don't believe me, then trust in the power of segways. Oh yes, from the depths of the video script comes our Twitch plug. Twitch.tv slash Marcellianonline to be more precise is where we stream 5 days a week, Shadowlands and live stuff as well. We have different schedules in the hopes of catching everyone online eventually. Hope you can make it. Let's start with the baseline rogue shit. Poisons are back. They won't be as strong as they are for assassination, of course. Instant poison will be your DPS choice for some AoE nature damage. It's nothing revolutionary, but it's extra damage and more importantly, class fantasy. The non-lethal options are where the good stuff starts. Crippling poison applies a slow to target's hit. This is clearly pretty good in dungeons if you can maintain it in AoE. And yeah, maintaining it seems to be an issue right now. That and numbing poison that reduces attack and cast speed have actually decent utility. Not game breaking, but enough to matter if you have or don't have them on. The issue with AoE is that outside Fan of Knives, which you don't have, there isn't a way to apply them. Maybe make Blade Flurry able to have that 30% chance for AoE as well to apply the poisons? That would go a long way since otherwise you have to individually target each member of a pack until they all get the poison and that can take a few GCDs per target. Not really efficient to be fair. You can still get the utility of the old shift though. Now this ability is cheap, generates a combo point, doesn't really do much damage, but applies a stronger version of your non-lethal poison. For crippling, the slow is massive, and for numbing, you will dispel in rage effects like the dog bears of Halls of Atonement. This will actually make your poisons matter, outside some things that need attention like Crimson Vial that has a reduced heal but supposedly buffed by pickpocketing the items to upgrade it. You also have Slice and Dice Baseline. This will become your finisher buff that you maintain. It's nothing impressive, 50% attack speed in a world where weapon damage might not be as great as it once was. But this will still take the place of Roll the Bones in your rotation. Because Roll the Bones is now a 45 second cooldown. Outside the cooldown it will also eat 50 energy and no combo points. The buffs are the same, the chances to get them is the same. The improvement comes in its cooldown being reduced by Restless Blade and it not eating combo points and having a cooldown takes away the need to fish for the right buffs. It will suck when you get the shit buffs still, but hopefully that can be tuned at some point. It's still nice not feeling like you will do more damage if you just roll the bones 10 times in a row for that perfect buff. Kidney Shot is back as the utility stun in its normal iteration. Nothing amazing here, mostly a nerf because combining the long ass stun with a high impact finisher in between the eyes was a bit too much power for one finisher. And with that, between the eyes will no longer stun but deal a, a bit less damage and apply a 20% chance to crit on the target affected. So it will still be a debuff you keep up and maybe even use with high impact abilities like killing spree. Blade Flurry now deals initial AoE damage when you press it with it being on the GCD. That's pretty good. The damage is actually quite impactful, so much so that it would be probably better to just use it in single target as well in your rotation. What? It's probably going to get nerfed at one point. It doesn't have a second charge anymore, but its cooldown is reduced by Restless Blade. This makes Outlaw Rogue feel really good in long combat phases and it being called Outlaw might just be better than combat because saying combat likes combat is silly. Repost is gone and its replacement is Evasion. Again, a pretty iconic rogue defensive that made sense to not be available with Repost as well. It seems that devs had planned to make Repost a talent that would replace Evasion. 
Not sure if it will happen still since Rogue remains one of the most overlooked classes in terms of updates. Might not be for too long though. Grappling Hook is now baseline 60 second cooldown and gets a rank 2 that will lower that by 15 seconds. Since Shadow Step was always an arguably superior mobility option, this buff can further incentivize Outlaws to also pick the retractable hook talent, but more on that later. The Kyrians of Bastion will give you Echoing Reprimand. This is a short cooldown combo generator that also anima charges a combo point. This term appeared for the first time now and it refers to putting a mark on a specific combo point that impacts your next damaging finisher that consumes the exact number of combo points to coincide with the anima charge. If you do manage to finish correctly, you will deal damage as if you spent 7 combo points. This can be incredibly powerful when timed right. The issue is the RNG factor, in that you can generate more combo points with ruthlessness, making it harder to just reach that sweet spot. It's still better than on subtlety and assassination for sure, but it's weird to have such a restrictive ability for a mechanic that's out of your control. RNG is good in some places, this is not one of them. For the Necrolords in Maldraxxus, you get Serrated Bone Spike. This is a 3 charge combo point generator and bleed applying ability. The bleed lasts until the target dies and the ability does more damage and generates 1 extra combo point per each bleed you have out already. So this can be good in AoE, a lot more than in single target that's for sure. The damage is nice but for Outlaw the best bit I feel is the combo point generation since you can end up firing 1 and getting 3 to 5 combo points per cast and baking as many finishers into it as possible is definitely the outlaw way to operate. The Night Fae of Ardenwald might have the most difficult ability to manage. Sepsis has a unique effect that either doesn't favor outlaw as much or I just haven't practiced it hard enough. You strike the target with a strong dot, 10 seconds if I remember correctly. If the target survives the dot, it gets hit by a huge tick of damage and you gain Vanish for a few seconds. From Vanish you have Cheap Shot, an ambush that costs 5 energy more than Sinister Strike but has a guaranteed second combo point generated. Outside of this, the usefulness is resumed at you exiting combat and having the option to stealth and do other things. This is a bit too specific and turns into a high IQ utility ability, or an incredible niche. Assassination and Sub can simply use it as a DPS increase, so hmm, I don't know if it's good for Outlaw. Lastly, the Venthyr come with another awkward option for Outlaw. Slaughter applies a lethal poison replacing instant poison. This one deals its damage in a strong dot and leeches some health back. The issue with this is the same with any other poison. In AoE it's almost useless, especially for a spec that's designed for dungeons with AoE predominant fights. Again, if Blade Flurry would just apply it in AoE, it would be a whole different story entirely. There have been only two talent changes and honestly, not enough. The first row is unchanged, although maybe Weapon Master can be better with a certain conduit. On the second row, Retractable Hook will reduce the cooldown of your hook by 15 seconds and also speed up the animation of you being pulled to the location. This will make the ability more responsive and reliable when you want to react fast to the combat around you. With the increase in range and a conduit that affects it, this turns into a stupid long distance covering ability. Actually fun! It will still compete with acrobatic strikes, but with the AoE cap maybe not as much as in BFA. Since Slice and Dice is baseline, Dread Blades comes back as a talent. The old Legion artifact ability was long missed and now seems like a powerhouse. Seeing as how Alacrity is the most boring shit in the world, and Loaded Dice having a mm, questionable performance, Dreadblades makes things simpler. More finishers, more cooldown reductions, more fun. For the legendaries, there are four rogue specific ones that you could aim for if you plan on multi-specking. Invigorating Shadow Dust works pretty well with Outlaw, but not so sure about the other two specs that don't have access to more vanishers. Vanishes. Vanish. Blah. Words. It's fine guys, I've studied English. 
Mark of the Master Assassin is amazing if you plan on playing sub and even assassination. Might be the best generic rogue legendary. If not, Celerity is the old tier 18 two-piece bonus where Slice and Dice being active gives you a chance to get 3 seconds of adrenaline rush. Those 3 seconds are essentially some energy regen boosts. Depending on how many procs it has, it will definitely improve any downtime you might have or energy starvation. Concealed Blunderbuss is the legendary from Legion that makes your Sinister Strike have a 33% chance to empower your next pistol shot to fire 3 times. This is fucking cool. <laughs> it's cool as shit. You will literally be a machine gun. That plus the baseline multiple strike chance of Sinister Strike, you can go crazy in certain situations and slash and shoot stuff like a maniac. It's so beautiful, I shed a tear or two the moment it happened. What times? Better than when I lost my virginity. Hey! Guile Charm makes your Sinister Strike gradually increase your damage dealt by up to 30% over the course of combat. This sounds like a boss legendary where you will be in combat anywhere from 3 to 10 minutes. Raid boss that is, depending on the encounter. Outlaw never shown in raids, so maybe this is the solution to every raider. Lastly, Greenskin's Wickers makes Between the Eyes have a 20% chance per combo point to empower your next pistol shot by 200%. This didn't seem to work for me. The mechanic is something we had in Legion and to an extent in BFA. With Deeper Strategy, you ensure yourself that every Between the Eyes guarantees a massive pistol shot afterwards. If it ends up working, of course. Soulbinds are essentially secondary talent trees and the options to build your outlaw are quite numerous based on what you want to achieve. Seeing as how Rogue was dominant in dungeons in BFA because of its utility kit, this says something about not just getting the highest damage output possible. The reason I am saying this is because choosing your build unlocks specific conduits to use. Endurance conduits focus on buffing your defensive cooldowns, while Finesse acts as pure utility mobility Essentially, things to help you control the fight. Potency is where the damage lies, and each soulbind path gives you access to four conduits of different types. Pelagos, for instance, can give you access to all potency conduits while still getting his major stat increase passives like Let Go of the Past and Combat Meditation. There are passives that buff File of Serenity and other aspects of the game that do not really focus on damage meters. For example, choosing a more finesse oriented route with Marilith from the Necrolords, you can get Plaguey's Preemptive Strike that increases your damage you do to a target by 10% for 5 seconds when you first attack that target. Although it can only happen one time per target, it definitely helps in AoE where you can target swap, let's say every 5 seconds, for that extra 10% extra damage. Extra, extra, I said extra, it's fine, let's get over it. Requires some management, but better than just passive stat increases. But still, passive stat boosts can be fun to play with. Take Social Butterfly for instance. Yeah, you are right. It's from Dreamweaver, the Night Face Soulbite. This gives you a versatility buff that lasts for 5 seconds and then passes on to two allies within 8 yards and then back to you, for as long as you have those two allies near you. If you play with the melee focus group, the constant 5% verse can be something to work around and boost your entire group's performance. Or simply go with Nadia from Venthyr with a balanced build of all three conduit types to get both Dauntless Duelist, a permanent 4% damage increase on a target until it dies, and Thrill Seeker. Both can work wonders in raids from their base design, and with the Slaughter Covenant ability that works also better in single target than AoE, you could be a raiding outlaw that can off spec to assassination to take that slaughter into dungeons. These might not be the best builds forever, merely my speculation to give you an idea of the options you could have. Because at the end of the day, you might just want the route that gives you the conduit combinations you seek. Outside endurance and finesse conduits that are the same for all three specs, the potency ones can be the ones that will alter your playstyle. Ambi Dexterity gives you main gosh an extra 10% chance to strike while Blade Fury is active. This can turn into decent overall AoE damage over the course of a high end M plus dungeon. Count the odds will come to play with Roll the Bones a bit. Ambush, Slaughter and Dispatch will have a baseline 7% chance to give you 
a roll the bones buff you don't already have for 5 seconds. Triple Threat makes Sinister Strike have a 20% chance to strike with both weapons after it procced its additional hit. I mentioned this before and it definitely works better with Weapon Master as a talent on the first row. Lastly, a more questionable conduit. Sleight of Hand gives your Roll the Bones a 7% chance of resetting itself. This is super awkward. On one hand, it could be good if you rolled and got bad buffs and it also reset and your second cast gives you the right buffs. It's a lot of ands and ifs. If not, you essentially wasted 100 energy and a conduit slot bringing back the actual worst mechanic of the spec for a mysterious reason that only the devs know. Mm. Outlaw, from a design perspective, seems to be in a more interesting spot than BFA. Some of its power you might have taken for granted has been made more interesting to push out, kidney shot for instance. Certain things might still need attention, like the Roll the Bones conduit. If the reset would make Roll the Bones trigger buffs you don't already have, then it could be good, even if the chance to reset would be smaller. Ghostly Strike, the talent seems <laughs> incredibly dead, while the last row is still in the same spot where Killing Spree can come off cooldown at a point where you have just too much energy and might end up capping it if you cast Killing Spree. Maybe give it a cost X energy component and buff its damage. That and if Blade Flurry could just activate poisons in AoE on targets hit, that would actually make Outlaw feel like a rogue a bit more. What do you think? As of this recording, no new things came to Rogue, but I have a feeling chances are changes are on the horizon and to keep up with all of these, Join ours and the Ravenhold discords where all of the rogue changes will be posted by the big rogue brains. And of course we would like to thank our patrons once again for supporting our channel. You guys make all of this possible, all of our news shows, podcasts and of course you've made possible our new song. Are we YouTube stars yet? <laughs> It's very humbling to see so many of you supporting us. It actually makes all of this possible and for us to be able to continuously upgrade the quality and the project number of our channel. So if you, dear viewer, are also interested in supporting us a little bit more, obviously it's not required but highly appreciated, the link to our Patreon is down below and you'll also find links to merch and other things like that. So thank you very much for watching the video, hope it helped and we'll see you next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wild Still, I play wild Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wild Still, I play wild It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wild